Okay, we got the coin system in place, global co coin counting. Um, let's get um, let's get the, the, these coins. When I when I pick one of these up, when I when I run over it, um, it should. Um, I want this just to basically just call the add coin event, right, and then disappear. So let's go in. So I, I have a collider and everything, but I don't really have a way from a rec room studio to listen to a collision. So I need to add um, a trigger volume. So if we look in packages, there's a trigger volume right there. And I'm just placing it right there. Um, let's do something that kind of centers it on that. Doesn't really matter. It came with a board. Um, now I want to. I'm going to look at these two. So if I let me see, if I if I look at this board now, I click on this this button to show the board. It only shows this board. It shows everything around you. But in this case, unfortunately, this board is flipped uh, flipped uh, 180 around. So I'm going to go in and just flip it around to zero. So they're both facing the same way. Uh, and now if I say, okay, I'm going to select, look at that board, it's going to grab everything around it and found that, okay, yep, here's a trigger volume. It's very close to a coin. I'm going to put both of those in the graph right here. So, uh, all right, so we got, got these two. When a player enters this trigger, I now want to do a couple of things. I want to hide a coin. Uh, and we can do that like this. And then when... And as well as hiding the coin, I want to be, um, I want to send the event so um, that I picked up a coin. So we can do that. We can say uh, event sender, set the event, and we can say add coin. That's what we did. All right. So we're done with hiding it. We can do that. Now, uh, there's one, one problem, like this, this trigger doesn't go away, right? So we, every time we go into the trigger, it's going to do this. It's going to send and it's going to keep adding coins even though they're not there. So let's put in another, let's put a little if in here. Um, so I'm going to create an if here. I'm going to do, put that, oh. Put that in if like that. Uh, what's the condition? Well, the condition is showing. Uh, so I'm going to re reverse this a little bit. So if it is showing, uh, no, I'm not going to reverse it. Then I'm going to hide it. And otherwise, I'm not going to do anything. So this is the only way we're going to be sending yeah, this event. <coughs> right, player enter. If the condition is that it's showing it, cool, then I'm going to hide it and I'm going to send the event. Otherwise, I'm not going to send the event or I don't have to hide it. Uh, cool. Now, let's look at what um, we want to do with, it, with uh, the door. So to get to the door, click on the door. And let's look at its panel. So with a door, <clears throat> we want to we want to be able to open it. And so let's do a interaction volume. So we have an interaction volume right here. Let's place that around the door. Uh, and this one is is kind of it's, it's a little bit more important to be exact on this one because that's going to dictate what it looks like. So let's get that one. Like that. Okay, cool. Um, and then it did the same thing. It placed this, this uh, object up here 180 degrees rotated. Let's rotate that back and now let's look at that. So you got the interaction volume and the door. Great. 
and kind of similar on this one like when if I use it I'm just gonna say open the door and after I use, after I open the door uh, I'm gonna do a an event sender and this event sender will be set event remove coin because it costs a coin to open the door <coughs> um, but now I want to say well so if you don't have any coins you shouldn't be able to open the door so let's do let's um, let's play with this locked state so we can say we'll say every time the coin ch uh, count changes then we're going to you know, we're going to mess with a, a locked state. So event receiver it's going to be on count, coin count changed. Okay. Um, and if coin count is, is greater than one, then it's open. Otherwise, it's locked. So this guy is going to go to locked. And we're going to say. Uh, we can actually just just look at the equals. We can just look at the count. If the count equals zero, then it's locked. As soon as we have more than zero coins, uh, no, that's wrong, right? The count equals zero. Yeah, no. Then it's not locked, right? So um, here we go. Once we get this this thing, if it's one, this is going to be false. It's going to set locked to be not locked. Uh, now you can interact with it. When you interact with it, it's going to open and it's going to send this remove coin um, event. <laughs> okay, so next thing we got to do is now just uh, select all this stuff and kind of copy paste it around. And, and that's always a little bit of a, of a messy operation, but one thing you can do with Node Edit is if you select things in here, it actually selects things in the scene as well. It only selects the chips though, so you can see like, you know, this I need for this, for this uh, door, that's the interaction volume. I also need the, the actual object for it. And this door, I need that door as well, right? So now you have everything that belongs to the door. Okay, uh, let's go. Let's go place this over here. Move it up a little bit. All right, something like that. Not very good. Push it in. Let's duplicate it. Put one over here. All right, and then I'm going to delete the the old doors that were there. And with some luck, we can now run this, and um, and it will all work. We only have one coin at the moment. We can duplicate and make make some more of those. Let's see if it works. <laughs>